What's up, guys? It's Todd with Real Dudes Review, and this year we've got a new generation of budget video cards to look at. And then, so what I want to pay attention to in this video is the AMD uh, Radeon RX 480 and the NVIDIA GeForce GTX 1060. Both these cards are around 260, 70 ish bucks, roughly about 15 bucks apart. And I went with the 6 gig version of the 1060 and the 8 gig version of the RX 480 just because the price isn't too, too much more based on their lower end counterparts at 3 and 4 gig. So to me, around 260 bucks is great for a budget video card, especially the specs you're getting with these video cards. Now, the cards I bought are both MSI Gaming X series cards. I wanted these to be as close as possible. Uh, but the RX 480 clocks in at 8 gigs of GDDR5 at a 256-bit memory bandwidth, or bus, compared to the GTX 1060, which only has 6 gigabytes of GDDR5 at a 192-bit memory bandwidth, or bus. But the GTX 1060 does have a higher core clock at 1594 megahertz and a higher boost clock at 1809 megahertz compared to the RX 480s. Uh, base clock at 13.03 and a boost clock of 13.16. But given the specs, I would think a higher memory bandwidth would help a lot more. So on paper, to me, it looks like the RX 480 is going to do a little more, perform a little better than the 1060. But I've always been partial to NVIDIA. In the past, in my experience, NVIDIA has just always performed better than the AMD counterpart. But with these new generation of cards, let's get into it and compare some benchmarks. Uh, I have a couple 3D Mark uh, benchmark tests and a series of uh, in-game benchmark tests that we're going to run and take a look at the results and see which one of these guys you should get or which one is more value for the money. I have a feeling that they're going to be so close it's going to be negligible. But again, on paper, I would think the RX 480 would you know, have somewhat of a significant improvement or performance over the 1060, but we will see. All right, guys, so the first test that we're going to go ahead and do is the DirectX 12 Time Spy test in 3D Mark. Now, this test is pretty hard uh, on video cards, so I'm not expecting through the roof frames per second, but we'll see how these two cards perform. But before I get into that, uh, there's a couple specs I forgot to mention and that uh, the CUDA cores and stream processors that each card has. Uh, Radeon uses, or AMD uses stream processors, and NVIDIA uses CUDA cores. Stream processors are additional GPU cores, uh, adding to GPU functions, uh, bandwidth, more operations, things like that. And the RX 480 has roughly a thousand more processor cores than NVIDIA's counterpart, the 1060. So again, on paper, you would think the 480 should outperform the 1060 somewhat significantly, but we'll see with the test. Now, before I show you the results, the last thing that I definitely need to tell you is the system that I'm testing these cards on. Uh, it is an i7-6700K, 16 gigs of DDR4 at 3000 megahertz. Uh, all I did is swap out the cards, swap out the drivers for these different tests. The CPU is liquid cooled but the only change in the hardware is the cards. So let's go ahead and take a look at the DX12 results for TimeSpy, where to me, I mean, you can look at the numbers right here, and the final 3D Mark score, 4250 for the 1060 and 4244 for the RX 480, that is so close and negligible, I'm calling this a tie. There's really not a way to say which card definitively did better than the other in this particular test. So the next text, uh, the next test is uh, going to be the Fire Strike text in 3D Mark, which is DirectX 11. So let's go ahead and pull up the results of that. And as we can see, again from the numbers, very very close. The RX 480 did slightly slightly better than the 1060, but again the 3D Mark scores at 11,104 and 11,385 are so very close with this type of test. Because you can run these tests multiple times in 3D Mark, and those numbers are going to fluctuate a couple frames per second depending on temperature, things like that. 
So again, as far as the 3D mark goes, I'm going to call the 4D and 1060 a tie again. There's really nothing that makes one card significantly stand out more than the other one in this particular test. The next benchmark we're going to compare the cards with is going to be Rise of the Tomb Raider running in DirectX 12 using the highest available preset. Um, and the other thing I forgot to mention is this is all done in 1080p. I'm not fortunate enough right now to be able to afford a nice 4K gaming monitor, so all these tests are at 1080p. And from the Tomb Raider test, Tomb Raider does three different tests, different areas that have different rendering loads and graphics requirements, things like that. Then I'm just going to be looking at the averages. You guys can see the other numbers. In the first test, the NVIDIA card did uh, 96.5 frames per second average, and the RX 480 did 88.2 frames per second average. So the NVIDIA card on test one had about an 8 frames per second advantage. Now we'll look at test two, where the NVIDIA card is about 74, and the RX 480 is about 69.3. Again, the NVIDIA card averaged with better performance here. Now we'll look at the last test where the NVIDIA card averaged 58.6 and the RX 480 averaged about 64. So here the RX 480 performed a little better. But if we look at the final result, I mean the NVIDIA card only performed two frames roughly better than the RX 480. So again, I'm going to call this one a tie. I, I can't really definitively say one card's, you know, significantly outperform the other. So it's another tie. The next in-game benchmark we're going to go ahead and take a look at is Middle Earth Shadow Mordor. And let's go ahead and pull up the results for that. And again, this is using the Ultra preset for both cards. Uh, highest available settings, um, again, at 1080p. And... Again, I'm just going to pay attention to the averages to where the average for the 1060 was 99.7 and the average for the 480 was 93.1 or closer to 93.2. So essentially the 1060 did 5-6 frames better on average than the 480, but again, that's such a negligible amount. I mean, it's not like this 1060 came in and just beat the shit out of the 480 completely to say I'm a much much better card um, it did have a higher max and a little bit of a higher minimum but again it's the average what you can consistently expect and these are again too close to call I guess if you had to define our winner here it would technically be the 1060 but to me those numbers are again negligible I'm calling it again a tie they're, they're so close that I can't say one is just completely dominates the other one here. All right, guys. So the very last test that we're going to go ahead and take a look at is going to be the in-game benchmark for Batman Arkham Knight. And again, this is at 1080p um, using the highest available graphics preset. All settings are maxed out. The only exception here with Arkham Knight is both tests. NVIDIA Gameworks is turned off just because the AMD card does not support some of the Gameworks features. Um, so let's go ahead and pull up the results here. And in this test, the RX 480 actually did a little bit better than the 1060 to where the average for the 480 was 106 frames and the average for the 1060 was 100 frames. So the last test with Middle Earth, you know, the NVIDIA card did about six frames better there, but on this game, the RX 480 did about six frames better here. So, though we can say this test, the RX 480 technically won, I really, again, all tests combined, all results combined, I'm calling these cards pretty much equal to each other. I can't find any shining light for either card that really stands out above the other ones except if you count the rare few games that are out there that do have the nvidia gameworks features and amd now has its own versions of gameworks so even those things are being more and more supported on amd cards so as far as if i could recommend one to buy just my biases i would go with the nvidia card just because 
in my whole PC gaming career, I started out using the AMD cards a long, long time ago because they were a lot less expensive than their NVIDIA counterparts. Um, but as time went on, I realized getting the best performance and the best results for me always came with an NVIDIA card. And so I'd have to say I'm partial to NVIDIA, but based on the tests we're doing here, I can't identify a clear winner or tell you which card you should go out and buy. Um, in reality, it's up to preference. Um, I have not overclocked these cards. All these tests were done with the settings out of the box and the boost clocks that are enabled out of the box. There's no additional overclocking, nothing like that, because I just wanted a real out of the box comparison of which one would do better. So that's it guys, that's the test. Whether you get the 1060 or the RX 480, I think either card is gonna perform just as well. Now there might be a situation where there's a game that's gonna utilize more than six gigs of video RAM, but I don't really see that happening. You'll probably see that more with 4K or if you're using games that uh, use the multi-monitor technologies. A lot of simulators are going to use a lot more of that video RAM. But for single monitor 1080p gaming, you're going to probably be able to play any game 1080p 60 frames per second. And I'm willing to bet that 4K gaming on these cards is going to use you know a mid to high preset and it's going to stay above 30 frames. Um, possibly even getting into the 40s and 50s. So both of these cards are definitely console killers. They are great gaming cards for the price. I mean, for $250, mid $200 range, these are excellent, excellent cards. But other than that, guys, uh, thanks for watching. Until next time, I will talk to you later. Bye.